five months running on a 100% Starlink, we're done with the hype of it being the best thing since mobile internet. This is my sober take on having Starlink as my one and only home internet solution. The TLDR is, it's an amazing alternative to other fixed internet providers, but with a catch for some. Oh, Muruda, the full version. Bo, handy. <laughs> Starlink put in a lot of effort to make it super easy to set up. You'd get a setup guide with no text, just big pictures that are easy enough to understand and follow, as long as you three or levels. Simple as it is, this does not take into account the thousands of different scenarios in which Starlink will be set up, especially for those going for the Gen 3 standard kit. The standard kit that I got <laughs> comes with a built-in kickstand and is designed to be placed on a flat surface. Problem with this is very few people have a flat roof, so it's difficult to get it mounted to the proper and as you can see from my shoddy job when I finished setting it up, not so good. And I am not alone. Check out these fancy setups that I'm seeing in the streets of Harare. For a professional job, Starlink sells a pole mount for $83. That's not cheap. So naturally, I grabbed a 3D printed one for $45, but I'm sure you can get them cheaper now. It's been holding things down for the last four months with no issues. Tulani, if you're watching, I hope this revised setup is to your liking. I made sure I did a great job. There we go, perfectly aligned. For all your Starlink installations, content, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But please like and share and subscribe. I promise, no kids are going. Is Starlink internet good internet? First off, let's be honest here. A solid stable 20 megabits per second is sufficient for 99% of all residential users. A whole family can stream comfortably, scroll through social media and browse the internet on that. It's in extremely few cases when you need to download a 100 gig file in an hour. That said, Starlink can obviously go way past that. In fact, in the first month of using it, I was getting download speeds that averaged 90 megabits per second with occasional peak downloads reaching over 250. Also, on average, these speeds have been getting faster over time with peak download speeds flirting with the 300 megabits per second and average download speeds comfortably above 150. This could just be an isolated case in my area. Those of you who got their Starlink back in September, let me know what your experiences have been like. I'm pretty curious. Stuff like streaming content on YouTube or Netflix, downloading files or games and streaming music was nothing to Starlink. Light work, my small small. Starlink absolutely shines at these. However, I terribly miss fiber and LTE when it comes to uploading large files. Normally, a regular YouTube video around one gig in size would take me about 15 to 20 minutes to upload on a 15 megabits connection. On Starlink, it's taking close to an hour and a half for the same task, which actually caught me by surprise. I mean, I am familiar with satellite internet having Chiruereche upload speed, but I never experienced it firsthand. Real-time online applications are also an issue. It's just like any other satellite technology, anything that, re that demands real-time comms will exhibit some form of lag. It's been fine for me for stuff like voice and video calls. WhatsApp calls were actually surprisingly more stable than on mobile data or my previous experiences with fiber in my area. It's when you decide to jam some competitive online gaming that it lets you down. Initially, there was a periodic drop in the network whenever the satellite passing over my Starlink was handing me over to the next uh, satellite in the chain. That issue seems to have remedied itself over time. Not sure if it's just the network learning my location or the benefits of satellites being added to the constellation in the time that I've had it. We did face a major Starlink outage in our region on the 22nd of January that uh, sent Zimbabwe and a couple of other countries offline for a few hours. Never actually got the details on what caused that, but that's the only instance it was found wanting in the time that I've had it. We're now in the rainy season and I honestly expected it to fare worse on a rainy day, but credit to it, Iko Mira Mira. <laughs> On the most severe of days, I was getting just under 20 megabits per second, which was very usable for my everyday internet shenanigans. But this was just my personal experience. When I talked to a couple of you guys, you had a much worse experience in this weather, particularly with calls. Rufaro even went to the extent of saying it was giving DSTV searching for signal vibes. 
Subscriptions. I was on the $50 package till December, then switched to the $30 one just to see if there are any performance trade-offs between the two. Spoiler alert, there is no difference in performance. If anything, the performance over time was actually improving. Uh, Starlink does state that the $30 subscription has deprioritized data. So, in the event that Network Yachi Arimero, 30 Mari subscribers will be sacrificed for the sake of the $50 subscribers. I guess I'll have to see it to believe it. Otherwise, I'll not recommend anyone to get the $50 package unless you're relying on Starlink for remote work and need all the uptime you can get. Because if you feel the need to switch subs, you'll need to wait your next billing date for the changes to take effect. Pro tip there. How does it compare to local telcos? I'll give it a pretty subjective assessment simply because I don't have data to present to you guys. My personal experience goes like so. In a normally functioning country, it's not going to replace your fiber. Fiber is more stable in uptime, download speeds, and for a content creator like me, upload speeds. It's also got less lag than Starlink, which is great for important real-time activities like competitive online gaming. Gotta have every advantage possible for that KDR. You know, you know. However, nothing really works normally in Zimbabwe. So, when you consider that fun reality, you'll find yourself on ADSL in this rainy season suffering a lot more than someone who's on Starlink. When we also add the price per megabits per second and the more attainable and limited packages Starlink is offering compared to local operators, the cons of Starlink start to feel very negligible. As for businesses, I, I would not recommend Starlink as your main internet provider. I can imagine how painful <laughs> it must be to back up a database to the cloud on Starlink. It's been 84 years. It has a couple of amazing use cases in a company. It can be an affordable backup solution for when your main internet provider faces an outage. Great to keep things going in the event that, I don't know, a farmer plows a fiber link servicing the whole of Zimbabwe. It can be a solution for a remote branch in the Bundu. I saw Zenara didn't waste time connecting some of its problematic toll plazas to Starlink. I like that progressive thinking. Starlink and subscribing to it got off on a rocky start in Zimbabwe. A company called Flowcash was empowered to operate as the payments processor for all things Starlink in the country. Not sure if the volume of payments drowned them, but for the first two months, payments and subscriptions were a bit hero miss. I only faced a challenge on purchasing my kit, but since then I've had zero issues making subscriptions. So how do I rate Starlink in Zimbabwe five months later? Price is good. The $30 package is unlimited, fast, and reliable internet, and Starlink recently opened up installments for the mini and the standard kits, making it even more accessible. Four and a half stars. Performance is good, but not great. Download speed is very fast, but let down by the terrible upload speed, weather-induced instability, and a little bit of lag. Four stars. Availability is really great. It works almost everywhere the sun shines. The only little issue is Harare and Blawayo are sold out. Four stars. In another country with competitive telcos, Starlink would have ranked lower, but given the nature of telecoms companies in Zimbabwe, it's actually an extremely compelling alternative. I've been getting a ton of questions about Starlink and I felt like answering them in this video was just going to make it very long. I'll make a separate one for that. If you have any burning question, just throw it in the comments and I'll see you very soon.